Welcome to Kalamazoo Lively Arts, the show that takes you inside Kalamazoo's vibrant creative community and explores the people who breathe life into the arts. Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo. I'm Jennifer Moss here at Miller Auditorium. On today's show, we meet our newest artist in residence, the Gilmore. We'll see how they've pivoted in the last year and get excited for what's to come. We'll also stop by the Arts Council of Greater Kalamazoo to get an update about their programming before taking a look back with artists about how their passions came to be. Here we are, ready to meet you and learn of the Gilmore. What is your role? So my name is Pierre, last name is van der Westhuizen, uh, originally from South Africa, but uh, have been uh, in this region, in this part of the world for 20 plus years. And I am the executive and artistic director here at the Gilmore for the last four years. What brings you to the Gilmore? I'm a pianist by trade, and this uh, is just an incredible opportunity. You know, it's one of the world's largest piano festivals, and uh, the award is such a special award as well, the way it's approached. And I've known about the Gilmore, you know, being a pianist, I've known about it for so long. And when the opportunity came up, I just uh, grabbed hold and very lucky to be here. Has this been traditionally the Gilmore International Keyboard Festival? It has been, yes. For all these years, it's been sort of known under that uh, title as the uh, International G uh, Keyboard Festival. Uh, but we decided to brand a little bit more toward the Gilmore as we have um, such a wide variety of programs under that umbrella of the Gilmore. We have the awards, we have the festival, we have a concert series, we have commissions. Uh, there's just a lot going on. Education programming. All right, Pierre. Well, um, in another life, I may work on being that Gilmore Artist Awardee, but until then, I'm going to have to start with the basics. So would you share a bit of maybe concert prep for me? How do I get in the mood for this? <laughs> yes. Well, aside from the practice, 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 10,000 hours, you know, so assuming you've done all of your practice work and you're standing backstage and you're getting ready for the concert, you know, um, I like to uh, stretch. You know, so I like to, you know, just keep my keep my posture in mind, sit up straight, or sit down. Loose my jacket, okay. <laughs> the okay. Piano, take your posture. And then uh, what I like to do, especially when I don't have a piano in front of me, take each finger and rotate each finger five times, you know, and then the next finger, take your thumb particularly, you know, and then, yeah, just try to, you know, warm them up. Your hands get cold backstage. So I put my hands right here because that's a nice warm spot, you know, to help warm up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you're quite nervous backstage, right? So one of the big things that we do uh, to help calm nerves is to get the blood flowing through your body. That really helps. So jog in place. Should I jog in place? Arms, okay. Swing, oh. arms. <laughs> swing the other arm. <laughs> and then I also I jump up and down a bit. Okay. Yep, exactly. So anything to get your heart rate up, get the blood flowing, and then take a deep breath in, hold it, and a deep breath out, you know. And then close your eyes. Imagine you walk to the piano and you sit down and you calm your heart rate, and then you open your eyes again and you do it all over again until you feel calm when you walk up. <laughs> and then I walk out on stage and say, I am good and you knock it out of the park.
the Wellspring Theater partnership. Mm-hmm. How does that? How did that work? We have been uh, partnering with the Wellspring Theater for many years, uh, particularly uh, in our concert series. It's a beautiful space, sort of like a black box theater, um, and they have beautiful hardwood floor. And we can, you know, take our piano in there, and we've been live streaming somewhat in there. And so it seemed like a natural partnership to continue with the live streaming. Everything is contained and set up in there. So they and they were so good to work with in terms of. Uh, helping us figure out to pivot, you know, from a concert production uh, to essentially a, a, a TV studio. Was there a production or two you'd like to 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 share that really did work this past year? Oh my gosh, yes, quite a quite a few. Uh, one of the highlights for me early on when we went to the virtually Gilmore uh, was our current Gilmore artist, 2018 Gilmore artist, Igor Levitt. Uh, he live streamed for us, but it was live from Berlin. Um, and it was just an incredible experience to have that happen uh, live, live. It wasn't even pre-recorded or anything. And we were, you know, simultaneously broadcasting here uh, from Kalamazoo and in Berlin. It was just, it blew my mind. And having that that pre-planning meeting with this team from Berlin. And to be able to say that we are broadcasting here from Kalamazoo, that we're doing these concerts from Kalamazoo, highlighting this region, uh, that's very special to me. Well, take me back to the young Pierre. When did you first uh, play the piano? (laughs) Well, I grew up, in a musical and artistic uh, household, my mother played uh, plays, uh, both the organ and piano, and my grandparents uh, as well. Um, but my father was a visual artist, and he had his painting studio right next to my music studio. So I would be practicing while he was painting. And so those are very, very special memories for me. Um, and then I, well, I grew up in a very small town in South Africa and was fortunate to uh, win a scholarship to go to college to study piano. And that's where I met my wife, uh, Sophie. And um, our first day at the college, um, you know, she didn't know anything about me, but um, I saw her practicing in a practice room and it was just a vision, it was amazing. And so I asked our teacher if we could play some duets together. And we've been playing duets ever since. We're a piano duo and we travel the world uh, playing Uh, two pianos or sometimes piano forehands together. And the show goes on. What's in store, Pierre? Oh my gosh, yes. We are, so we still have a, you know, a season uh, ahead of us of programs. We have some jazz concerts coming up and uh, some more of our rising stars. And we're focusing also on uh, 2022, which will be our next uh, Gilmore Festival. Uh, It's a three and a half week, uh, almost four week long festival. Um, dozens of performances in the Southwest Michigan region, jazz, pop, classical. Um, we have films, we have lectures, we have so much going on during the festival. So we're hoping that we'll be in person. Keep up your great work in this new normal with the Gilmore Pierre. Thank you, Shelley. Here we are visiting the Arts Council of Greater Kalamazoo. Let's start with you, Kristen, and have you reintroduce us to your council. Sure. So the Arts Council of Greater Kalamazoo, we serve the county of Kalamazoo, but we also serve the surrounding six counties around us. And we're a membership organization. We serve artists and arts organizations. We try to infuse arts and culture into um, all of the economies of um, our communities. What is the mission of your council? We like to think of ourselves as the connector. So in terms of connecting our artists and our arts organizations with the rest of the community, and we all know that we've spent an entire year uh, and then some now not being connected or trying to connect in a meaningful way. And so uh, hopefully people can come to us for resources. They can come to us uh, to connect with other artists and with folks who Um, want to engage in artistic services. But there are also administrative jobs. How did you handle the COVID-19 financial relief? Yes, so we were lucky we did get a PPP loan uh, ourselves, which enabled us to stay uh, working, which also then meant that we could engage the different foundations within our community, not to help us personally, 
but to get money to turn it right back out into the community. So last uh, year in 2020, we gave out $351,000 and that was spread over 83 artists and organizations. And we know that our relief wasn't the thing that that um, was a make or break, but we like to think that it, it cushioned just enough that maybe somebody kept a job for just a little bit longer or uh, an artist was able to put food on the table and, and, and pay the rent. So very proud of my staff and all of the work that they did to make sure that that happened. And, and one of those examples is with Summertime Live. Um, we partner with Richland and Portage, Schoolcraft, Parchment, Ashtimo, and also Beats on Bates. And uh, we were able to bring everybody together <laughs> at that first meeting. And Kristen was able to say, hey, if you need some support, like we, we can still do that. <laughs> so all of our partners that we had last year were able to be on with us again this year for Summertime Live. Well, how about fiscal sponsorships? Where do we start here? Yes, it's the uh, it's the one program of the Arts Council that is probably the least known. So we can ask act as a fiscal sponsor. We're open to to helping provide those business services and provide the financial oversight if they're looking to get a grant for um, for a project or they want to become a nonprofit but they're not ready to make that leap. Uh, hopefully, folks that are watching and thinking uh, you know about the next best thing they want to start. Um, we're open to having that conversation. And hopefully that comes with a phone call, perhaps to you, Bianca, with the question, how do, how do I become a partner? Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, and it's been great to also have those, you know, conversations with, with uh, you know, people on the outside wanting to make sure that they're a part of Art Hop and they're uh, a part of, you know, our programs and, and, you know, partnering with us. Perhaps grant partners, memberships as well? Sure, absolutely, yes. Uh, we are a membership organization, so our members are kind of the heartbeat of what we do. Then the more members we have, we know the more vibrant our community is in terms of uh, sharing those resources and uh, having a community to support each other. And we also offer a program that we called Another Way to Pay. So if you are having difficulty, which we know some people still are having difficulties making ends meet financially, um, a little bit of time, a little bit of elbow grease, helping out other artists and helping us in the community for a few hours, and you've got yourself a membership to the Arts Council. So perhaps bringing some of the necessary programming from 2020 into uh, the next decade. As you know, Kristen said, there's so many great uh, outcomes from this past year. We've had um, 82, a thousand virtual folks that have been with us that we've been able to keep pumping up, you know, as we go move forward. And, um, you know, our concerts in the park, we have eight concerts. So we have a full fledged, you know, um, amount of artists and entertainment. And so, uh, yeah, it's been really great to continue to look into this 2021 with you know, connecting those dots. Bianca, spend a moment talking about, uh, well, truly an upcoming activity you want to share. Yeah, so April 2nd will be our first outdoor art talk, and we're going to start at 6 p.m. And that location is going to be on Bates Alley. And also we have a couple other businesses on Kalamazoo Mall, like um, MRC Artworks and Colors and Cocktails, uh, Cherry Chocolate Art that are going to also be with us on our credit union, which is right around the corner. I know we can't do it now, but I'm itching to learn some art. So what do you have for me in the near future? Absolutely. So during April 2nd Art Hop, you can come down to Bates Alley, Shelly, and make an awesome sand candle through the Kalamazoo Candle Company, where you can pick all kind of different colors and make all kind of different patterns in your own personalized jar and they'll hook you up with the process and you'll learn how to do that and get to take it home. See you there. All right. When did you find your love of music? Like, were you a little kid? Um, did you come from a musical family? Music has always been a part of my life. I mean, I always knew I would be a musician. Um, and so when I started playing, I started playing the drums at the age of four. Um, and my parents had my first drum stand. And every year they bought me a new instrument. So I learned <laughs> to play the piano and then the saxophone and the guitar and the clarinet. 
to the trumpet and the trombone. Um, and so I always knew this is what I was going to do. The question was, what instrument am I going to play? Because I play a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, but piano has always just been kind of something that's been in my heart. So I grew up in a sports family. So I, as a kid, didn't really do much art. Um, but my dad, at, when I found out later, when he was younger, he liked photography and he is also really good at drawing. So when I started showing interest in photography, he's the one who gave me my first camera and, and kind of pushed me to like try it. I was born in Taiwan. Um, but I moved when I moved to North America when I was about nine months old. My father came to get an advanced degree in the sciences. He played the violin a little bit himself. Um, so I think I next gravitated towards the violin because I wanted to be like daddy. And my parents then got me violin lessons. The original Velvelettes. Okay, so tell me where the snowstorm and this uh, trip from Kalamazoo to Detroit, how did that happen? Well, he begged my dad. My dad is a Baptist preacher and a he was a baker and a Baptist preacher. So, he, and then a full-time father to seven children. So it was difficult to get on his schedule and he had to prearrange everything. And we would come in begging him almost every day. We would beg, Daddy, when, are you going to take us to Detroit? And blah, blah, dee. So one day he came in and he just said, told my mom, Dora, I'm going to take those girls to Detroit this Saturday so they can audition. I am a classical musician because my parents were very avid supporters of all arts. Um, and I was very regularly steeped in those communities and those experiences. And that added to my my knowledge and my desire to continue doing that. I was born in Belgrade, Serbia, which is part of the former Yugoslavia. And I'm one of those uh, stories that I grew up in a musical family. My, my father was a cellist and my first teacher for many years. My mom plays piano. My um, older sister is a professional violinist. So we were kind of a loud family, you can say. That day, that Saturday, the weather report was very, very grim. It was not going to be a snowstorm, and it was icy. And my mother said, "You shouldn't go. You shouldn't go." He said, "No, I'm going. We're going to go now." He says, "Because we gotta, we're going to go. Because I've been putting this off for you know weeks and weeks." It took five hours for us to get from Kalamazoo to Detroit, and that's when I-94 was just too lame. We finally made it there. Now, you would think that the name of the, of, on the signage on the building would be Motown. But Bertha, what, what, you have something to say about that. Yeah, that's right. I was the very first one, I, I think, that saw that sign. And it had Hitsville, USA. But I was sort of kind of uh, mused that one of the letters was a little crooked or whatever, but it still read Hitsville, USA, but it wasn't Motown. So we were like, hmm, I guess this is the place. I'm the oldest child of my parents, five. Um, so they were pretty young and fun when I was a baby and they would take me around to all their activities. Um, one of the things they loved to do was architectural tours. Um, so we were on one of those in Boston and uh, walked into this massive, beautiful marble bank and there was a harpist there. Um, and my impression, we always wonder about memory if your little child mind memory is accurate, but this is what I remember. <laughs> and I just remember this big, beautiful floor and this huge instrument and this big dress and this glorious sound. And it was awe-inspiring. And I guess I just didn't stop talking about it until they gave me harp lessons for my eighth birthday. So that, that happened at what age? I think I was three. Wow. And so you must have, like, it must have been something that stuck with them five years later. So when we went in, there was the secretary that was sitting behind the desk. Um, I think she was chewing her gum and <laughs> really super long fingernails. I mean, you know, just anyway. Uh, so we were very excited about being there. And she said, may I help you? And uh, we said, uh, yeah, we came to an audition um, for Motown. And she says R real quickly and sort of uh, curt, she said, well, I'm sorry, we don't have auditions on Saturdays. 
And we said, but we came in a snowstorm. It took us about five hours to get here. Can you please make an exception? Oh, and remember Cal, she asked us where we were from. Oh yeah, go ahead. Brother. Remember that? Mm -hmm. She, and uh, I forgotten that she said, um, where are you girls from? And we said, Kalamazoo. And she goes, Kalama who? And I meant, so we just re really very uh, sad and very hurt. And uh, we said, you know what? Maybe it was not meant for us to, uh, to do this. Yeah. So we really, some of us even had tears in our eyes and uh, we said, let's just go back home, you know? And I tell you, and this is the honest to goodness, true story. Just as we got to the door to go back to Kalamazoo, the recording studio door opened and a gentleman walked out. And who should it be? Mickey Stevenson. He was our producer for the Barbies uh, in Flint. He <laughs> came out of that uh, recording studio door at the right time. <laughs> And he recognized uh, Norma and myself and Norma, Bertha, what are you doing here? And we said, hey, Mickey, we're here to uh, audition. We said, you're in a group. This is, my, yeah. this is my girls group and we're here to audition. That's right, that's right. And he, he said, well, you know, why don't you come in or something li like that? We said, well, uh, this young lady told us that we couldn't have auditions on Saturdays. Oh, and man. At that moment, he looked at that young lady and just said, they're coming in. And boy, <laughs> you should have seen us just a bit, made an about turn. And we walked past her and I, I have With to say- With our noses this, in the air. We did yeah. put our noses in the air a little you know, bit. We wanted to, really wanted to do that, <laughs> you know? And you know, and people, when they hear this story, they say, being at the right place at the right time, it's not what you know, who you and know. And especially when I came to U.S., I, I started trying to bring my mom to visit, you know, once a year, once every two years. And then it would really be um, a waste if we don't play a concert together because we played together when I was a little boy. But also it's really great to be able to collaborate now when, when, uh, when I'm, you know, fully developed musician, I would say. So, um, yeah, we, we try to play once a year, every two years. And the other thing, too, is Barry Gordy's father, we called him Pop Gordy. When we first went to Motown, as Cal remembers too, we would see him sometimes with a hammer in his hand. Or Gordy, Pops Gordy would go around and he'd have his little, uh, you know, <laughs> worker's belt on, whatever you call that, uh -huh. shop belt. And he would uh, he would go around and repair things, woodwork, something, uh, some picture may be lopsided on the wall or, he was just there to help his son and his and the business. The family again, the family again. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Kalamazoo Lively Arts. Check out today's show and other content at WGVU.org. We leave you tonight with Everin Ozell performing a classic Bach piece. I'm Jennifer Moss. Have a great night.
Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.